Hi everybody, today an art journal tutorial. I'm going to feature two stencil techniques in this video. The first, I'm going to show you how to use a focal image stencil with modeling paste. And I'm going to add detail to a background by removing paint through a stencil. So this Mermaid Dreams stencil is absolutely gorgeous. This is the 12 inch one and I have wanted to do this page for a long time. I'm taping it down because I'm going to put modeling paste through it. It's a large area and I just want to hedge my bets to get a good card. I'm using TCW modeling paste. I put some on my palette and I'm applying it with a key card. I find I just get better if I use the key card as opposed to a palette knife. I'm wiping off the excess, removing the stencil, and then I'll scrape off the excess and clean my stencil. Once that's completely dry, I am going in and I am putting a coat of gesso right over top of all of the modeling paste and the stenciling. Now this page, I've already put a coat of gesso on it. So I'm not worried about going outside the lines. I just want everything to have a good solid coat of gesso. Using the modeling paste through that, you have these textured areas and we want to be bringing that up when we start to colorize this stencil. Now you'll notice that I did not do the background first. I would do this in a different order if I was doing it again. I would have done the background first. I would have applied my stencil and whited out all the parts of the mermaid. And then did the modeling paste. It just would make it easier. So right now I am coming in and I am painting all the exposed skin. I'm just using a pre-mixed paint from Cerem Coat that I have on hand. You can mix paint and get whatever skin tone that you like. Now I'm using yellow oxide and orange and a bright yellow in the hair. And I'm painting over top of the texture and in between the texture. The texture with the modeling paste that was through the stencil is going to give us a lot of dimension. And I'm just trying really hard to get into all the nooks and crannies so I get complete coverage. And as always, I'm mixing paints wet on wet as I apply it because I don't want this to look flat and one tone. Now I know my background is going to be blue, so I chose orange yellowish hair because I know that's going to really stand out against the background. I'm using a brush, a smaller brush, in order to get into those nooks and crannies. If you get paint where you don't want it, dry it, come back, cover it with gesso, take it back to ground zero, so to speak, and then reapply the paint in a more precise fashion. So now I'm going to do the mermaid's tail and I'm going to use a whole lot of colors. Bright yellow, orange, alizarin, or not alizarin crimson, quinacridone magenta, deep violet, turquoise, and yellow green. 
And because I'm applying this wet on wet and I want it to blend, I'm putting a little bit of each color on my palette so I have it ready to go so the paint doesn't dry in between because I want to take advantage and get the blend of the colors. So I'm starting with the yellow and then applying the orange, making sure I have a band that is going to be a blend of those two colors. And then I'm rubbing my fingers over it. And you can see the texture from the modeling paste is really showing. And again, I'm using, you know, a smaller size brush and really working hard to get into those nooks and crannies. When I rub it back, it's, you know, it can be lighter or darker. And that's just adding to the finished look. Now I know that the colors that I've put next to each other will make nice color when they blend wet on wet. If you're uncertain, do a little test off to the side and then you'll know if it's a color that you like. Working hard to get that blend in there. If I, it's not quite blended enough, I'm adding more of one color and another, adding, you know, blending it right on the mermaid tail. That deep violet and turquoise makes a beautiful bl dark blue. And the turquoise here with the yellow green makes a lovely teal aqua. If it gets too blendy, again, stop, let it dry, or dry it with a heat tool, a little bit of gesso, take it back to white, and then reapply. Loving how that tail worked out. It's a great blending activity. Now, because there's the pink in the middle of the mermaid tail, I wanted to have that for the top of the mermaid. Now, I admit this got a little bit messy, and near the end of the video, I actually end up going back and redoing this. I wasn't ever happy, and it's like smack dab in the middle of the picture. So your eye is automatically drawn to it. I'm putting the stencil back on and applying paint through the stencil for some of those detailed areas for the eye, for the shells that are in her hair. And you can do that for any of the high parts as well, just to add. And you'll see me doing that as well. Now, I needed to add some shimmer to my mermaid tail. So I've got gold paint on my brush, and I've just put on that one scale of the mermaid tail all the way down. And it just gave it the right amount of shimmer and shine. I wanted to add some definition to the focal image, so I'm using my angle brush and the floating acrylic technique, and I am shading the body of the mermaid against the skin and into the hair to add some shading, highlights, low lights to the hair. These are the steps that typically take a lot of time, but they really make a big difference to the finished project.
it adds life to your project. When you add the highlights and the shading. And I just follow my instinct. I don't follow, do anything else. Now I'm going to colorize the background. And I'm using a combination of turquoise, bright aqua, Prussian blue, and white gesso. And I'm applying it with a makeup brush, with my finger, with a with a makeup brush, paintbrush, makeup sponge here. I just want a interesting multicolored base to my background. As I said earlier on, I would have done this throughout, then put on the stencil, drawn a line around the outside of the mermaid, white it out with gesso all the inside, and then done all the same things that I did with the mermaid after the background is completely different. But hindsight's always 2020. And as you can see, this isn't impossible to do the background after the fa fact. It just was a little more difficult. Now we're going to remove white gesso. You could use white paint through this ripples stencil. Now I wasn't sure if I was going to like the effect of adding pattern, but I absolutely loved it. And this ripples stencil is perfect for any under the water scenery. And what I'm doing here is pretty much I'm doing it all throughout. Now if I had put white gesso on the whole thing, and removed it, it would have been very organized. This way you've got ripples going every which way. So I kind of like this effect better. So I'm just adding more gesso, overlapping, and I'm loving the, the softness that this gives to the background and with a little bit of pattern from the stencil. I like to use, when I do removing removing paint through a stencil, I keep it to smaller areas because you do not want the paint to dry before you remove it because, of course, then you're not going to get to, you won't be successful removing it. Also, this technique works if you have a coat of acrylic paint or a coat of gesso. If it's raw paper, it won't work as well by far. I'm just reaching in. You can see how getting in those little nooks and crannies is a little, little bit more difficult than if I didn't do the mermaid first. But there's always a way of doing something. And sometimes you don't know where this is, where it's going. But I'm absolutely loving this effect. And I could have left the background just like this with the different tones of blue in the background because I mixed three, four colors together. And then that ripples stencil. But of course, you want more layers in your background. So I grab Prussian blue and a makeup sponge and I apply it to bubble wrap and I'm applying some bubbles on top, reaching in to my little nooks and crannies. And if I got some on the mermaid, I can go back in and put a little gesso and paint it out again. No worries. I got a little orange paint on there, so I'm wiping it down, adding gesso, and then just reapplying the paint. At the end, there are close-ups of the finished project and that background, which I absolutely love. 
Then I'm using this stampendous dot stamp and just adding one more layer of circles to my background. I've taken this off the block and that way I can manipulate it and get into those nooks and crannies. I apply the stencil back on and I'm using Prussian blue on the tail because I want to darken the highlighted areas there. You got that contrast. Loving it. Now I'm going to shade around the mermaid and I'm using a combination of Prussian blue and black. You could use Payne's gray, which is a dark blue toned gray. I want this mermaid to stand out from the background. And the shading that I'm doing with the floating acrylic technique with my angle brush is achieving that. This page in reality took about two hours from start to finish. But I've sped it up to about 20 minutes. I'm edging the page with the black. I know I'm going to be adding a sentiment and the sentiment is going to be black. So that's going to tie it all in together. Now I wanna add, bring out a little more of this texture from the modeling paste. So I'm just shading with black. I do come out off the camera and do a little bit of highlights as well, just to bring out the scales of the mermaid tail. And you just keep going till you're happy with what you have. You can see the the top of the swimsuit there. I uh, it's just got a little bit messy. I wasn't happy with it. I tried to darken it. Thinking that was enough. So I go to my Ocean Commotion sentiment pack and I pull out this mermaid quote, be a mermaid and make some waves, but it was too small. So I blew it up on my photocopier here. And then I was going to just make it say, make waves. I was just going to use part of the sentiment. Then I thought, well, I have the two sizes. What if I put one a little bit smaller and then bigger? No, that didn't work. Then I decided that I wanted to bubble cut around the words. And then I ended up using the pretty much the entire quote. I left out the word some. It didn't fit and we don't need it. Be a mermaid and make waves. And because I bubble cut it, it all that white disappeared and doesn't take up the background. So I decided I'm going to put gesso over top of this and try to fix the air. Now I'm putting the, um, the flesh tone that I've chosen. And then I put the stencil back on and I stencil the quinacridone magenta over top. And I'm much happier with how this looks than what it looked like before. 
I'm taking pictures and looking at it to see if I think I'm done. Then I come back and I'm just adding a little bit more shading and highlighting. Sometimes taking a picture allows you to see it from a different perspective, especially if you spent a lot of time working on it. Sometimes you don't see those details and it's good to look at it from afar or take a picture of it. I'm adding a little bit of shading on the bra. Thank you so much for joining me for this art journal tutorial. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, select the option to be notified of upcoming videos, and until next time, go get creative.